Hi, it's Diane Evans with stampinwithdiane.com. I'm an independent Canadian Stampin' Up! demonstrator. So if you like what I'm going to be doing in this video, or if you like this video, make sure that you do subscribe to it. And there's also down at the very bottom, if you hit, there's a dragonfly down there, you can just hit that and it's an easy subscribe button right off of the video. And also if you want to get notifications immediately, just make sure that you hit that bell. Anyways, today what I want to do is I want to do a technique that as soon as I saw this particular stamp set, I knew I had to do the chalkboard technique. And this stamp set is, it's such an amazing stamp set. But it has, I, I, I think it's the birdhouses that really, um, I, that I am so attracted to. I, I find that they, um, they bring back an awful lot of memories and different things um, within the family and that sort of stuff. So anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to do a chalkboard technique using this um, particular stamp set. And we're also going to do a bit of a coloring technique on that chalkboard. And then um, hopefully you're going to like that. Originally, when I started doing this, I started doing it with Versamark, but it works 100% better with the white, um, Whisper White. Now, this happens to be an old stamp pad of Whisper White. When you get the Whisper White now, you get the new stamp pad and it's uninked and it comes with a re-anchor. Always make sure that you have your ink pad really, really um, inked up. So we're also going to do an easel card with this. So I have a piece of Bermuda Bay. It's five and a half by eight and a half and it scored at four and a quarter. And then I went and I took my um, scoring board and I went and I scored from the outer left corner down to the inner right corner and that's going to give me my um my easel fold so and then I'm also going to use garden green I know I, I love Bermuda Bay and garden green and then our chalkboard is going to be on the black so what we're going to do is we're just going to go in and I'm going to use my glue on here and I'm just going to put Maybe I won't be using my glue. I'm going to come in with my seal then, I guess. And I want to just put that garden green right on there. And we're going to get that done first. So we just want to line that up on the front of the card. And then when this comes up like this, that's how it's going to um, do the easel on there. Okay, so that part is kind of done. Now, it's this part here. Let's do the black. Um, I have my embossing buddy. Remember, with the embossing buddy, we don't have them anymore, unfortunately. However, you can make your own by putting cornstarch in some infant socks from the dollar store. And then you can basically um, um, just fill it with cornstarch. Sew it up really good. And then you'll have a really good anti-static cloth. All right, so now what I want to do, there's certain images. I want to use these bird houses. I want to use the bird stand and some of the flowers and everything else. So I am coming in with my white ink. Almost forgot how to open this thing. And then now what I want to do is I want to get um, my bird houses on there. Now I'm using white embossing powder as well. So first of all, I'm going to put my two bird houses, these two, and I've already put them on the stamp set together. So I'm just going to put that on there like so. And the one thing I always suggest that you do is make sure, there we go, good. Uh, make sure that um, you wash them off right away. I'll wash them off right after the video. So now I'm going to come in with my third birdhouse and I want it to go oh about there okay now what I would probably do at this point is maybe go and um, um, heat emboss this and it might be a good idea the only thing is is when you heat emboss two or three times what happens is that you um, tend to to dull it so I don't want that to happen so I'm going to come in with my um, I'm going to come in with my the um, stake I guess is what it's going to go in as or the pole and I'm just going to mask that part off there we go 
and I'm going to mask this part off on the bottom. And then I'm just going to go over here and I don't want it even, but it fairly even, I guess, just like that. And then what I want to do too, then is I want this to be a birthday card. So I'm going to come in. This has a birthday wishes on here. So I'm going to stamp that down below there. And the reason I want to do, want to do that is I want to have know where things should go on here. So let's put that about there. Now, I think at this point, this might be a wise choice to go in and put the embossing powder on here because I don't want to get that ink. I don't, because it's still fairly wet. It's a pigment ink, so it stays pretty wet. <laughs> and we want to blow on that. And then we've got some fantastic um, flowering images on here. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to take this one that's got a few of them on here. And let's put that right down about there. And then I have some with single images. And you know, I'm going to come back in with my that piece of... I don't want it to be down into the um, birthday. And then let's go ahead and maybe put some, hmm. I haven't heat set this, so it's so important. But let's see, I've got, I know I've got another one with images on it. Let's see, I've got the single one. So, and I also have these grass images. So let's go ahead and put some grass here. And maybe grass right about there. And I think I could also go and put another image on here. About there. There we go. And again, I want to go in with my emboss, embossing powder. And let's see, is that going to be enough? I think so. Okay, so now we want to come in with our embossing tool. And this has a self-sealing mat um, below it. So what I want to do is I just want to come in with my silicone mat. Whoops, oh shoot. <laughs> it should be okay. And I'm just going to heat set this. It is a bit noisy, however, you wait till you see how the rest of this all goes. I like to also look at it because I like to see that it's all been cooked. This is so important that we make sure that all of this is cooked because it does tend to run off. And with the other technique that I'm going to be doing on here, it'll be ruined if it's not all completely heat set. And the beauty of with the white, you can tell that it's been cooked um, and heat set because it goes quite shiny as opposed to the dull finish that's on there. There we go. It's almost all done. A quick double check on there kind of muck that part up there but that's okay we can live with that all right so now what we want to do is we want to come in with our markers now you could do this with watercolor crayons but I find that this works the best with the markers so I'm just going to go in and we're going to color some of those houses now I want this to kind of give like a maritime um, eastern sort of type effect on um, this particular uh, these birdhouses, you wanna make sure that's cooled off. We're gonna use the brushed end and I am just going to go 
and I'm going to color right onto the embossing palette, the embossed image. And you know, we might even have to use the Melon Mambo instead to get that brighter color. And like I say, I'm going to make these kind of like um, the houses that um, you see back east in the Maritimes, probably more like Newfoundland, that sort of stuff. So let's go here. And like I say, you can use this with also, you could use it with um, the watercolor crayons. This gives more of a vibrant look. We might have to even go in with this color here. There we go. And you know what, let's go a little wild and let's put some green on here. And like I say, sometimes this is better with the um, watercolor crayons. It just depends on the look that you want. So then I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to have, um, I wanna do another birdhouse here and here. Maybe what I should do is show you how it works also with the crayons. And we might be changing over to the crayons because the crayons work quite well on onto this. There we go. See how they just go onto the white. And now I'm going to come with my... Yeah, I think in midstream we're going to change out to do the watercolor crayons. Or pencil crayons, right? Because they tend to be working a little bit better. I don't know why with this particular embossing powder. I'm not sure. Okay, and now what we want to do is we're going to use some daffodil yellow on there as well. Let's say we're going kind of really bright houses, but I... I like the look of the houses. A little bit of Eastern Canada. Now, let's see, we're just... Yeah, it didn't show up too much on there. So, like I say, we'll just go in. All right, and now let's see, let's do pink roof over here. You don't wanna get, you're not gonna do these wet. Let's go this, let's go with our Bermuda Bay again. This kind of reminds me of chalkboard, um, that they do with the special chalks, the liquid chalks in restaurants and that sort of stuff. And then I was going to use, and I don't know if this will work on this part here. Let's try this. Yeah, that'll work okay. See what I mean? It's just weird how it is on certain parts of your um, embossing because the brown, this um, this is um, soft suede, um, works just fine on here. So I'm not sure why. Try this. Now it's working. <laughs> Interesting. All right, so let's just put some green in our grass and on our flowers. And then we're going to use some pink for our flowers. 
Now that was really strange how that didn't work to begin with and then now it's really working. So it just shows you that what you need to do is you didn't need to kind of play around. See, I don't like that melon mambo on there at all. And we'll use the Okay, so that's giving us, well, look, that's come off now. Isn't that, it's not sticking on there. Okay. Well, at that point too, then I could go in with my early espresso ink or pencil. There we go. I want to put a bit more on here. There we go. All right, so that's giving us the type of look where it's the bright colors on, um, on a chalkboard, right? But we're not finished yet because there's so much more that we can actually do with this. All right, so let's just put those off to the side. Now I'm going to come back in with my Whisper White. And I have a sponge dauber. Now, what I want to do, and I'm going to come in with just a spare piece of paper, and I'm just going to, I want to just, now this is giving the look of us using a chalk brush, right? This is such a fun technique like I say, and it just adds a bit more to the look of the card. There we go. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to color or do something to the inside of the card. So I'm going to come back in and I'm going to actually use the um, this, um, this part here. I just want a tiny bit of um, just color on the inside of my card and you know what I should have gone in with my embossing buddy but I didn't so hopefully we can get most of this off and we're going to heat set that and now white on white is a little bit harder to see but you can see it to a point. It's just going to take a bit to emboss. It goes from an opaque to quite a shiny sort of finish. And oh, what have I got there? I don't know how that happened. Let's see if that's going to show up or not. Okay, so, because I may have to do the opposite side with that. So I'm going to come in with my Granny Apple Green and one of my blending brushes. Hopefully, I wonder if I can get that off with an eraser. Hmm. I may have to use the other side. Yeah, we do, because it's quite bad. All right, so let's start again. <laughs> oh my goodness. If something's going to go wrong, it really goes wrong, doesn't it? Now, I'm not sure why I got so much black on this ink pad, but I can rub that off. That's not a biggie. Never worry about that part, because you can always rub it off. Like, I'll just take um, my spoon that I actually do... And I'm just going to take it off like that and then I'll redo it and I'll use a paper towel with it. So it'll work just fine with that. Okay, so now I'm going to come back in with that embossing powder again. Now it's so nice. Um, now with um, Stampin' Up! you get your embossing powders. You get them in the basic colors, which we black, clear, and um, black, clear, and white. So you can get the three packs together. And they're all the same size, they're just packaged together. So, um, yeah, that part is not too bad. Um, and then, of course, you can also get the metallics, too, which has the new copper, or the copper, bringing back the copper again. So, 
All right, so let's try this again, right? I always say, be prepared. I do do lots of bloopers on my videos. All right, so let's go and we wanna make sure that that's dry. So I just take my blending brush, put it into here, dry and cool, because what could happen is that um, you could, um, I don't know, it wouldn't set as well. So I'm just putting a bit of color on the inside of the card. And you know, I think with this one too, I could come in and use a bit of old olive on it. And I think that's what I'm going to do. Just gonna come in and put a tiny bit of old olive on here. And that's just gonna give us some different highlights on it. Now, I know it looks like it doesn't really show up at this point, but the magic of a Kleenex, and we're just going to rub that off. And there is that. All right, so let's go ahead and put that on the inside of the card. And of course we have to have something to pop up that easel, right? So we wanna make sure that the easel is good and scored. So we're gonna have that easel come up like that. Let's put this onto here. And just like that. And then what we need is something here to stop that. So I've gone ahead and I've, pun I've stamped one of these um, bird houses. So let's go and let's bring in, whoops, I wanna use the brush end. This is the brush end, this is the thin end. And you can see this isn't a huge area that I'm coloring. So I can go ahead and use my markers because I tend to like using my blends instead um, because they, um, they're, they don't streak, but this one's not going to streak, it's going to be just fine. And I think what I could do is I could put some yellow in there. I'm not sure, we'll see how that looks. I'm gonna kind of do it with a light hand. And there should be maybe some pink in there too. Just to kind of go with the trend of the inside of the card. I don't really like that. So let's go. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and we can put this here. Now we're gonna put this on with dimensionals because we want that good and popped up. And I might even double dimensionalize it is what I'm thinking I'm going to do to make sure that it's good and popped up. So. And one here as well. And then let's go ahead and put that there. And there's our birthday wishes. So there's our card. I hope you like that. It's like I say, it uses the bird, um, the garden birdhouse stamp set, which is in the J to J mini catalog. Now, if you do like that, make sure that you do give me the thumbs up. And it looks like this. I'm just going to go back over here. I think all those colors that I put on with that, um, the markers, the markers are coming off. So that's a good thing to know. These colors don't come off. So we're just gonna go and, there we go. There. Okay, so if you like that, give me the thumbs up. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Also, if you, um, if you, um, 
want to, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you live in Canada, I have a very generous uh, host reward program. I give away tutorials each and every month to anybody that's made a purchase. Plus, I also have a very generous, generous reward program. Um, there will be a link below to my blog and all the measurements will also be on the blog. So I hope you enjoyed that technique and have a great day. Bye for now.